As West African authorities contend with the Ebola outbreak, new worries are emerging over food shortages. Scared by the prospect of catching Ebola, many farmers have left their land and livestock in search of safer areas. With food scarce, the World Food Program says it's received $59 million in aid, $59 million, but it needs around three times that amount. Joining us now is Kenneth Quinn. He is the president of the World Food Prize Foundation and a former U.S. ambassador to Cambodia. Thank you very much for being with us. Um, Kenneth, can you talk to us about uh, and give us an idea about how serious the situation is on the ground with regard to food, avail uh, food avail availability? Yes, Maggie. Uh, last week in Des Moines, Iowa, at the World Food Prize Borlaug Dialogue, we had the ministers of agriculture of Liberia and Sierra Leone, as well as a live address by the president of Sierra Leone and the president of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, all of whom were addressing this issue. And there are two things. One is the immediate need for food, and then the long ter longer term implications for agricultural production. And the terms that were used in those discussions were, were very startling and sobering. They talked about the very survival of Sierra Leone. Those are the words the president used. They talked about the impact in a catastrophe of epic proportions. The minister of Liberia said that all of the gains that had been made in the last six years to build the country back up after its devastation from civil war have been wiped out. <clears throat> they talked about communities being wiped out, farms uh, being allowed now to lay fallow, crops not being harvested. So uh, I'm so glad the World Food Program, for whom we have great admiration, is working on the immediate short-term feeding people, but the longer-term implications for agricultural production are immense and enormous. There could be mass starvation of both of these countries. And this is what emerged last week from the discussions here at the World Food Prize, and it really sends a signal to the ministers who are meeting today and the heads of government that we face a dramatic an urgent Ken, need. Kenneth, I, I just want to jump in. Can you explain why is the, the long-term situation so dire? What is it about this that is going to set them back in that long-term perspective? And what is needed or what can be done uh, from the world communities, from the business community in particular, with the expertise they hold? Well, the, the long-term uh, implications are such that if <clears throat> farmers are not able or are afraid to continue with agricultural production, and the uh, countries will have to import food and don't have the money to do that, that uh, they face the prospect of their agricultural sector collapsing because it's built upon uh, investments and continuing program for uh, continuing uh, interaction with the global trading system. The minister of Liberia said they had commitments from the private sector of about $17 billion dollars. They're all disappearing in just a few weeks' time. So there needs to be a, an overall commitment that brings both companies that are involved as well as governments to uh, focus on providing an urgent framework and a reinforcement that says we're not going to allow uh, this to happen to those countries. We're not going to abandon them. Obviously, it's going to be very difficult to continue uh, and uh, the in the short term, but they will need this ongoing support and investment uh, that uh, can only come from a concerted effort. That's right, and I think that you do underscore an important point. Um, there does need to be a concerted effort. Uh, the countries cannot do this on their own. They do need the expertise, and we appreciate you bringing your point of view and expertise to the show today to help shed some light on this problem.